it's Michelle and I haven't done a napkin folding video in a while so I'm excited to do one for you guys today I've got a really really cool napkin fold for Halloween we're gonna be doing a bat so all you're gonna need is one beverage napkin in black and just open that up all the way and we're gonna turn it in the diagonal direction and we're going to fold it in half once to make a triangle and then just crease that and if you want to bring in a bone folder you can or a utensil or a ruler or something to help you crease a little bit later on so now we're just going to take the top corner and bring it down and you want to bring it down Kind of into thirds if that makes sense um, as if you were going to fold it into thirds you can kind of use that to judge when you've got it about right but we're just going to do the one fold so now we're going to work on the wings first and right here where this crease is I don't know if y'all can see where it's black it's difficult to see this edge here we're going to fold up along that and then starting from this top point here that we made we're going to do sort of a kind of a diagonal accordion fold and we're going to keep this point sharp and we're going to sort of accordion fold like that and we want a total of four folds this being our first so there's one and you can kind of judge the size by about how many folds you think you're going to get so that's one again Kind of place your nail there to keep that corner sharp. We're going to figure about there. That makes two. Three. And four. And then you want to use your bone folder or whatever you've got to help you crease to crease that down really well and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so you guys can see where that crease is or that edge rather so we're going a total of four folds once along that there's one Keep your corner sharp. Two. Three. And four. that really well now we're going to flip that over and spin it around so that we've got our accordion folds underneath and our napkin pointing down and for this part I'm going to use a ruler as my guide and I'm just going to line it straight up the middle just so that it's centered straight up the middle and I'm actually only going to use this top edge as my guide so I'm going to fold my napkin against that making sure that we're against the ruler up here but I don't want it to be against the ruler down here I want it to angle out 
where the bottom kind of widens. And then I'm going to fold this. Sort of at a little bit of an angle as well. So you can kind of see there, I've got this edge angling out. And I'm kind of following that line here, if that makes sense. They're kind of parallel. So we'll do the same thing over here. Again, widening out our bottom edge. Making sure that it's about equal to the other side. So that's sort of giving us kind of like that necktie shape. So we have our edge here and we kind of want to follow parallel to that. And we can just slide that ruler out and flip it back over. Well, as you can see, I did not get that equal. So I'm going to try to flip it over and work on my fold a little bit. I want to see if I can get about the same amount of wing sticking out on both sides. I think that looks a little better. So we'll go with that. Crease everything again. Make sure you keep it sharp. And now we're going to take our bone folder or the edge of your ruler or a pencil or a skewer stick or anything to just kind of poke the center in. Let me zoom in for that part. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top edge and I'm going to poke it under so that it kind of tucks underneath itself. And once it's under there, we want to crease that down. We might have to work with that a couple of times because we want to make sure that that stays creased very sharply because that's what creates our little pointed bat ears. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're just going to take our wings here and fold those out. And you can see how we get that sort of bat wing fold in there. And you can kind of just barely uncrease it just so that it lays down, but you can still see those mountain and valley folds in the wing. And here's the part that I am so excited about when I was coming up with this idea. I thought, okay, for a place setting, we would want our bat flying in front of a moon. At first, I bought yellow plates for a yellow moon. And that's a little bit too cartoony, I think. So, I changed my mind on that, and I went back to the store, and I got the same paper plates in silver. So, I thought a silvery moon was more the look that I was really going for, and that was more what I wanted. But then I found some silver plastic plates in the Hefty brand, and I really like that they are larger and bigger around. But they're deeper, too. So I was kind of conflicted with that. I wasn't sure if I wanted those. And then, 
my daughter-in-law showed up with something she didn't even know that she was getting it for this purpose i didn't even know what i would use it for until now she just happened to give me these today on the day that i was going to be filming this video knowing that i wasn't really happy with any of those plates as my silver moon so here's what my daughter-in-law showed up with silver holographic paper plates I love these they are so cute and how wonderful is that that my bat is flying in front of a holographic moon I love it this just topped it all off so just place your bat in front of your silver moon and I think she said she got these at Target which I was really happy about. I don't even have a Target near me. So the fact that she was able to get that was just wonderful. I really love these. So then you can leave it just like this and just serve it with your bat on the plate. And that will be all the table setting that you need. Maybe a gray or some sort of dark tablecloth as a background as the dark sky. But I decided to take it one more step. You know that I often put candy and little treats on the plate to help finish the look of what I'm going for. So I decided to get some M&M Minis. And I'm going to find a couple of those in red. And that is going to be our bat's eyes. And I think that is just going to finish it off just perfectly. I'm going to turn them over, of course, where the letter doesn't show. I just love it. I am so glad for the way that everything came together to create this Halloween table setting. So I went and found a gray cloth to put under this. And I think that is really what I would want to do at a Halloween party. I would want the gray tablecloth as a dark Halloween sky. So you guys be sure to comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other ideas or something you'd like to see. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel give me a like over on my Facebook page, and don't forget to join our Facebook group, Crafty Minds. We really do have a lot of Crafty Minds over there. Be sure and check that out, along with Pinterest and Instagram, and also don't forget to visit the blog. I'll put the links to all of those in the description below, so be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.